Welcome to the RSP NFL Lens. I'm Matt Walden with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. We're going to take a look at rookie wide receiver Chase Claypool, who got eliminated by the Tennessee Titans. One reception, minus two yards. Didn't incur this pass interference penalty. But prior to that, Chase Claypool was one of the top 10 receivers in production through the first six weeks of the season. So let's take a look at the difference between what the Titans did versus the other teams that allowed all this production. The first obvious difference between what the Titans have done and other teams is really the Titans now know that Chase Claypool is a dangerous receiver. Before that, he was an unknown quantity. You're going to see him middle trips here. You're going to see the zone receiver as he looks over to Claypool. He's going to see Deontay Johnson work to the inside, and he's going to react to that more. Even though he leaves Claypool wide open in the middle of the field here, he reacts more to the known quantity. And as a result, Claypool's wide open here. And that earns him a positive gain. The same is true against Philadelphia late in the game. You're going to see Claypool, even though he's had a huge game thus far, still when it comes down to third and eight, fourth quarter, three minutes left, and they have Claypool inside trips, they have two safeties here. But the safety over top on the left side is going to pay more attention to the known quantity, Juju Smith-Schuster, and that leaves the linebacker alone on Claypool. And watch the line, the safety. He's just reacting to um, Juju Smith-Schuster work to that outside range. Now you have a triangle defenders who are more concerned with Juju Smith-Schuster. As a result, you have this easy one-on-one -on -one with Claypool who gets wide open in the middle of the field. The safety realizes that, that he's in trouble. And there's no turning back at this point. Claypool gets the game school, um, ceiling score on this particular play. In contrast, the Tennessee Titans, in the beginning of this game, you have Claypool in the middle of the this trip set, and then you have a little motion from Juju Smith-Schuster. Watch the linebacker here. He sees Smith-Schuster come off, but immediately flies over to the flat to take care of Claypool. He'd rather leave Juju Smith-Schuster open after what they've seen on film than chase Claypool, especially when you have two defenders in the middle of the field here over top. They'd rather give Smith Schuster the catch and buzz over there to Claypool. Earlier in the year, the Broncos, they play a too high safety look, but you can see that the safety's favoring more here. They're going to show a blitz and have the safety cover the, the slot man on the left side. That leaves a one-on-one -on -one with Claypool, and Claypool just whips his man, gets deep, Makes easy work, 84-yard reception for a touchdown. Fast forward to the Titans game, and here's Claypool singled up on the left side. Now, the difference is that the Broncos, or excuse me, the Titans here, two deep safeties, off coverage, at least playing, you know, a good cushion off. And the safety in this case over top in this two safety set is playing at the number, so he's favoring Claypool. So you're basically seeing... A, a bracketed look or a look that's favoring Claypool. Even though he's responsible for both players at this side of the field, he's playing closer to the numbers. Whereas the opposite safety here, where Ben Roethlisberger is looking to Deontay Johnson, is playing inside the numbers, more concerned with Juju Smith-Schuster. So as a result, you can see that the way that they've aligned their safeties even says, we have to take care of Clay Chase Claypool. As a result, Ben Roethlisberger tries to go deep to Deontay Johnson up the sideline, and it's intercepted. But still, he doesn't even look Claypool's way because he knows pre-snap the alignment of this safety. Here's a third and 11 with Claypool on the right side here, and you're going to see him work, and he's just going to have basically a little hook route here, break and stop, hook back outside. He gets a nice game. Fast forward to the Titans game, you see Claypool outside, and he's going to run a similar route. But watch the underneath defender 35 cross over the top of the slot receiver to make sure that he cuts off the route that Claypool's going to run. It's similar to the one that you saw in Philadelphia. Much different. Basically, what you're seeing is that teams are no longer underestimating Claypool. As you can see here against his Giants defense, Claypool's going to get open up on the right-hand side, right top. He works this fade route. The defender doesn't even believe that Claypool is even going to make the catch on this play. You can see he just kind of stops short, even though he's facing Claypool the whole time. He doesn't try to 
interfere at all because he doesn't think it's going to happen, but it's caught. The same is true over here with Darius Slay. He's facing Claypool on the bottom right-hand side. And you can say Claypool on the outside here, work on this little out and up and the fade. And while he doesn't catch the ball, you can see that Slade basically is looking towards the quarterback rather than trying to chase down the receiver. But not Malcolm Butler. Malcolm Butler, he's seen what Chase Claypool can do. And as soon as Claypool gets open, Butler makes sure that he gets contact. He's not dealing with any of that. He's not going to give Claypool any opportunities. If he gets beat, he's going to interfere. And that's the difference that we're seeing with Chase Claypool now is that defenses are paying more attention to them. They're sliding over help, over top or underneath. They're also going to be more physical with him when, he arrive, when the ball arrives at the catch point. And that's why Chase Claypool in this game was stopped for one, you know, one catch minus two yards. And you're going to see more production probably for the other receivers for a while until Claypool and the Steelers can counter the adjustments that the opponents have made from the tape. Thanks again for watching. For more RSP NFL Lens videos, you can check out my YouTube channel, Matt Waldman's RSP Film Room, and my site, www.mattwaldmanrsp.com.